Hello. What's up, guys? So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you caught my review, but I just received the botanical set. This is a special edition by Schminky, and I love it. It's beautiful. So I thought what I would do is come into the studio tonight and we could just play with the colors because we already did a review of the colors. Um, but now we get to play with them and I'm going to use the brushes that I recommended to you. So if I only had one brush set, this is probably right now what I think would be a great arrangement of brushes to have. And this would be the Escoda Ultimo size 6 travel brush, Escoda Ultimo size 10 travel brush, the, thir the 3 quarter inch Escoda Prado, um, it's like a wash brush, and um, the Escoda Prado size 2, and this is a like a striper or a liner, you know what I mean? Now these two actually came in a special set called the Fabio Cambrinelli set and I can't remember right now like what was the other brush that came with it. I think it, I'm not really sure. I'd have to look through my brushes but in any case you can get these separately. Um, but I think this is a really good brush set to have so I'm going to work with this for a little bit and kind of ignore that I have a bunch of other brushes to choose from. This is the new botanical set and I'm just gonna get my sketchbook out. Let's see, we'll put this over here. And uh, yeah, and just start playing. I need to put glass over. So if you're wondering what this is, this is actually my sketchbook. I have had so many different sketchbooks and to be honest with you they just annoy me a lot because I don't get to choose the paper and I often can't get them again and you know then the paper is not the right size so I resorted to just taking paper that I like um, and putting it in this book and then it's so easy literally I didn't go any I didn't get crazy I just kind of um, have it clipped on with these little clips and it works great you know what I mean and it's exactly what I need and I'm happy with it because I literally can just take the pages out I can replace them I can put in more pages you know and and it just works for me I tend to like doing stuff like this because I cannot stand spending like a ton of money on sketchbooks and then being disappointed in the paper you know what I mean or being locked into one size or just not being able to do much of anything that I want to do. So I guess it just comes with time. You start to learn what you like and you learn what works and what doesn't work. I've had some sketchbooks I have liked, but I can't always get them, you know, and then I'm stuck. So I'm just wetting the, um, the Schminky palette. This is the cutest, this is the cutest little box. I mean, like I just am so excited by these really we're going to customize this too maybe we'll customize it a little bit tonight who knows we'll see as i start to play with them i'm going to play with the colors the way they are first and see where i land um let me show you what i did do in the last video so in the last video this is where we left off I had done this botanical set, just a little study of swatches and um, a little arrangement testing out some of the colors. So I'm just going to kind of bring this further into my sketchbook and play with the colors a little bit more and see what we come up with. And then, then I'll kind of get a feel for what I'd like to see happen, you know, moving forward. So I'm going to start with the... Let's go to Ultimo 10. Let's just start playing and see what happens. Let's grab some, let me get this on stable ground here. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab some yellow. I'm going to start dishing these out because these are really small little pans and I usually, 
I usually only paint with full pans, but I, I just love this little travel set so much that, and I have other travel sets, like literally I have so many travel sets because I, I do like to sit like out on my patio with my dogs and just paint. And I don't like to like have a lot of gear because if you've ever, if you have dogs, you realize that you can't just like leave everything sit. It has to fold up. It has to like, you know, become nothing really quickly. <laughs> so, all right, let's just start putting some color down here. I really love this yellow. It's really beautiful. Really pretty. Okay, it's almost fluorescent like, isn't it? Let's rinse our brush out. Let's get the yellow out. And let's go with another color. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think which direction I want to go right now with these flowers. What is the vision? Let's play with the carmine. Let's go with this. So I was watching a video and they were talking about fugitive colors, you know? And it was interesting because uh, one lady was really disappointed with Daniel Smith and the history there and in the Primatex and it made me remember the whole drama around how they were charging so much for for instance like Sleeping Beauty um, is very very expensive it's like $30 for a tube of paint and it's it's not even and it's fugitive you know it's one of those colors that it will ultimately probably fade out you know and Daniel Smith kind of has a lot of that going on sometimes. And I like Daniel Smith. I use a lot of their colors. I like the Primatex. I like to mess around with them. But ultimately, I end up mixing my own because I don't like the inconsistency of the light fast rating. You know, I think that it's a little scary that you're paying a lot of money for paint. And honestly, you don't really know if it's light fast or not. So I'm just kind of laying down some color by rolling my brush because it gives me those nice petals. And if I let this dry, it's going to soak nicely into the paper. And I'll end up with um, the ability to do some layers. kind of giving it a little more color in some areas. This technique has a lot to do with your brush and the paper. Some of the paper is going to soak in the color and, you know, make it really, really light and some won't. I mean, you know, getting back to that conversation, can you imagine like painting something, giving it to someone and literally it fades in a year, you know? This is what we're talking about. I mean, we're literally talking about uh, colors that can fade that quickly. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of shaping out uh, just some flowers so maybe some little buds and trying to decide and sometimes I have to flip my paper around trying to decide like if I see any real vision in these flowers for which way I want them to go and I'm kind of seeing that right now mm-hmm yep Good. I 
I didn't really think about my composition. You know, in composition, you want to kind of like not just paint in the center. You want to kind of uh, move things around a little bit. I think I'm going to make that green. Okay, so I have my splashes of yellow there, and they're developing out pretty nicely. Um, we can even use a shot of water. So far, I've only used the 10 Ultimo, which I love. I need to put... Um, I definitely need to put some glass on my... So now I'm using this wash brush to remove some color and just kind of suck up some areas because I don't want this flower becoming like runaway flower where it's so big that literally we forget what it is. So I do want the wisp wistfulness like you know but I don't necessarily want it going in every direction. <laughs> um, just take this with a shot of color. God I miss my I really miss my old my old spray bottle that my dog ate because it was just perfect. You know, sometimes you get these great spray bottles. So what I'm doing is I'm loosening up the color just by reactivating it with a little water. And when I get lucky, sometimes it sprays off in a, in a direction. And then if I see a puddle that I don't want to continue, I'm just walking it back with this flat brush. But some areas I do want them exploding into some different colors because we can always clean that up later, but it's it's kind of like a really nice uh, trailed look. And in some areas I can actually encourage it. You could actually take this brush and encourage it, which is, you know, this is a good reminder to let you know that I have a ton of um, lessons on Skillshare. So if you want to take more classes from me, you can go to my website at JacquelineJacks.com and connect with my Skillshare. If you're not a member, you can get it for free in the beginning with a, um, a code that I have on my website. And if you are a member, then come on over and take the classes that are there. You'll like them. I also have classes on my main website in sets. So depending on the time of year, they'll be available to you um, some way, some shape, some form. So like uh, urban painting is coming. There's some uh, botanical painting right now, depending on when you're seeing this video. I mean, you could easily be watching this video a year from now, so <laughs> just go to my website and see what's going on. So uh, right now, I'm just kind of kicking this around and just playing, adding some layers in. I like you know this to be a little bit darker and as it's drying I'm playing this by ear I'm still working on my carmine I really love it I think I'll wait till these dry and I can go back in let's go ahead and see what we can do with adding another color I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and put like my stems together um, or maybe just flush through a little background like what does I mean, we have the yellow, so why don't we take this little brush, although this is more detail brush. Let's take the big one again, because we pretty much, that's all we need, right? It's a big one. Let's get some Quin Gold. Get enough on my brush. I'm just going to kind of put it in the palette here a little bit. When the palettes are new, it's so funny. They're they're so perfect. I wonder if this is going to stain. It's it's really well powder coated, so I don't really know that it will. Um, where am I going to put this? I probably want to put it down here to begin with. And we're going to let these kind of bleed into it a little bit. The Quin Gold is so pretty next to this. 
And then as it goes up here, I'm getting a little lighter. Now remember, I only loaded my brush once, and this is the Ultimo. Look at how much color it's spreading around. I literally used hardly any. And it's just delivering beautiful, this beautiful Quinn Gold everywhere all over the page, mixing in in some areas with the, the lemon, which I personally thought was a bit bright. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it here because as I put my stems in, it will just yellow and green go great together. And even if I use a little blue or something, then it will still go great together. So thinking ahead, I'm actually, you know, remembering that I want to encourage some of this to become a little more orangey and to really bleed a lot, you know, and be very loose. But full on knowing that when I go to paint some of my other stuff on here, it will like it will it will intermingle really well. Okay, so as far as letting it dry, I mean, this is sketchbook paper, right? So it's not going to do the same thing that 100% cotton paper will do. If I had done this, I mean, this is just for a sketchbook trial, so I don't really care about it uh, going and doing its magic. If, if it were on 100% cotton paper, the best thing about it was it would keep working and it would change. It would like go from this to something so much more and so much more powerful. And that's why I don't really advocate the use of hair dryers because you're basically stopping everything right in its tracks, you know? So we're going to kind of let this dry and work around it a little bit. I think that's my point. But at the same time, I want it to remain loose. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, green olive color that was given in the palette here. And I'm probably just going to liquefy it down a little bit, not mix it with anything just yet, because when it hits the yellow, technically it is going to be mixing with something. And I'm going to look to place in some very, very loose lines that hopefully will bleed in certain ways as they go through. Now I don't want it soupy, right? I don't want it to bleed so much, but I do want to just kind of be able to roll my brush around and create some very, very loose, crazy little leaves and just play around with the, with the strokes. And this one's gonna be here. Here. So I'm just looking at my vision of where my flowers are, you know, like this is going to be a flower here. I probably should have put in the centers for you so that you could kind of get an idea of what I'm thinking here. And I think I'll do that next. Isn't that a beautiful color? It's so pretty. It's really beautiful. I mean, I didn't really, I didn't mix this with anything other than it's just got the Quinn Gold with it. But you see how nicely the Quinn Gold's mixing in with this um, because I didn't let it dry yet, you know? And it's got a really beautiful painterly effect happening. So I'm just going to add some leaves and watering stuff down. I really like that. It's so pretty. Okay, so we've got that one going there. So now let's go ahead and add a center. So if these were poppies, the center would be dark, almost like a sepia. 
So this is kind of the closest or Prussian. I almost want to use Prussian because I don't really love painting with sepia, but if I was going to use sepia, I would probably mix it with carmine and see what that does. Because sepia mixed with carmine makes this really pretty kind of rosy color. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to use that just to add a little extra detail to some of these flowers here. It just gives it a little bit more, it gives it a little more texture, you know? That's actually really, really nice. I actually might, we might use that. Okay, so let's take a little more. I'm gonna mix it with the red. Rinse off your brush in between so you don't contaminate all your colors. Yeah, look at that. That was like a total accident. So I'm taking the carmine, I'm mixing it with the sepia brown that they gave me, and it's making me this really, really rich kind of like dark raspberry that's kind of giving me a lot of extra bang for my buck here, you know? So now I'm going to kind of go in to the centers and encourage these little movements out. I'm not trying to cover the entire center. I want to leave a lot of white. I'm just dropping in um, these areas because as we're painting we, we don't really want to lose sight of where the center of the flower is and the looser you get the more likely you are to lose sight of where the center of your flower actually is and what's going on like what you originally saw you know um sometimes i'll actually see the flower for a little while and then i'll be like oh i lost it i don't even remember it. and i and i had a really cool clear vision in my head as to what the flower was supposed to look like <laughs> but it doesn't always it doesn't always do that it's okay um see now like i completely forgot what this flower was supposed to look like I think it was supposed to be like a closed flower, so it's like in there. So that's fine. So maybe maybe we won't try to make it look like really anything at all. And I'll just add a little bit of like a little splash, a little stylized line. I really like that. This brush is so much fun to paint with. I mean, it's good for so many things. It really is. So there, we're gonna like over exaggerate some of these buds. And if you notice, I'm going on the underside of them with a the darker color, just because I wanna leave, you know, I wanna consider my light. Um, always consider the light. The light will save your life. So I'm going to liquefy down this beautiful like burgundy and I'm just going to kind of roll it around some of my some of my beautiful petals like in the center just to give it now that they're starting to dry just to give them a little more energy And to highlight some of the areas that I feel should drop into the back. Of the flower. So I'm kind of just shaking it down here and applying some really like the way that looks. And just ever so slightly, but you know what? It just does the trick. It like gives you just a little bit more shadowing. This is looking good. I really like this so far. It's really pretty. Put a little shadow in there. Mm-hmm. 
Boy, I don't want to like I want I don't want to do too much, and the reason why is because I want you to be able to stand back and see this and kind of put it together yourself. It only has to it only has to tell a story. It doesn't have to tell the same story to everyone. You know what I mean? It only has to tell the story of I see the flower and then your brain can put the rest together as far as, you know, what it's doing. As long as you under, I give you just enough to understand what it actually is, you know? Okay, this is really beautiful so far. So I almost I almost don't want to touch it anymore. I love it. <laughs> we could just leave it like it is. Um, as this dries, though, I mean, I've got like a monochromatic thing doing going here. And I don't have a ton of green, but I don't really need it. I think we could go ahead and darken this up a little bit because I do like the little darker area here. So I'm going to go back in with some of the green olive and remember guys the palette is for your convenience you don't have to use every color in it don't be tempted to just use every single color <laughs> so if you notice I have the leaves and the stems really really light and now I'm going back and I'm actually going over the stems or close to it and giving them more. So now we've got the stems in the background underneath what the stem actually is. Okay, so does that make sense, right? You're going to see it a little closer up in just a second. And this way, it kind of becomes really interesting because you're like, you have this like deeper shade over the lighter shade of green. I do this on trees a lot too. It's really good to do. Like you have your original piece and then you go back in with a little more color. Dry brush a little bit. Watercolor is so beautiful, really. Okay, so now let's loosen up the green just a bit. And I'm kind of not going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and kind of strike some more of these through because I really love how playful and pretty they look. So. bringing them through here. Just really playfully, you know, no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. There's a lot of white right there. I think I'm actually going to put just a blotch for the stem of this flower just so that I can kind of encourage you to see that flower and then we're going to go over this um, one in the foreground a little bit just take some of it out with my finger let it dry and then we're going to roll it roll it back in and here I'm going to add some green and try not to paint over just because I want to point out that there is another flower there since I left this white area I can go ahead and just put a little color in there so I'm basically just kind of um, encouraging your eye to go in different directions by adding some extra, you know, some extra little textures here, which is 
the way flowers really are, I mean, when you have flowers, um, whether it be an arrangement or wildflowers, there's always like some green, you know what I mean? And I feel like it's really pretty. It's, I just didn't want to leave it by itself. I mean, we could have. Just this green is such a beautiful color. It's a shame to not have more of it, you know, giving us that playful, that playfulness. Okay, that's looking good. Now this was a flower here that I almost forgot. So it's kind of going through. I think I actually might paint a little more of this flower here. Okay, enough of the green and we don't want to get carried away. Although it is, it's incredible. Really, really pretty. Um, so now that our carmine is drying and we kind of know what it's doing, I'm going to go ahead and get the concentrated carmine, add it to that little mixture so that it gets a little more depth. Put a little bit of water in it. I'm using the very, very thin uh, striper brush because we're just gonna we're just gonna roll it over and see what it does. So I'll probably hold it this way. And I want to kind of create a little more of a flower, but I gotta figure out which way to do it. So let's just start with this and see what happens. Okay, nice. I like that. Let's add a little more color and do another layer here. And remember, we don't want it to be perfect. In fact, we want it to be very imperfect. I just want it to be in places that actually look like it should be. Perfect. Nope, don't say perfect. <laughs> okay. And I want to create a little darker look there. The way that other darker one dried, it was okay, but not great. So I'm going to go back into the center of my flower here. That looks good. So it's literally drying differently, right? So if this was the petal coming out, let's try and put the base of the brush where the center of the petal would be. So put the tip of the brush where the edge of the petal would be. And I think you probably can't go wrong that way, you know, because you'll get that nice uneven edge but it just helps you shape your flower a little bit more. This carmine's pretty. It's very, very bright, but it doesn't dry overly bright, you know? It dries just really nice. Okay, I like this shape that I'm getting here, so it's kind of got a little bit of a geometric to it. And I like that. It's really pretty. Okay, we'll let it dry. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. So by playing with the edge of my brush, I'm actually getting these really, really natural organic shapes that I'm using as layers. Really pretty. Okay. I really love that. Okay, I'm going to just shape this flower just a little bit more because it's dry and I just really like the way this is coming out now. I like 
how some of these flowers kind of have that geometric kind of shape look to it. Now this one I just kind of took out some of the darks but that's okay. And this is really washed out. So let's just bring in some of the geometric shapes just a bit. And by geometric I mean it's a little more structured than it was. And I, I kind of really, I love that, you know? It looks really nice. To me it does. You are your own artist, so you can definitely do whatever it is that you want to do here. Okay, I am really, really super happy with this now. Okay, the only thing I'm noticing is I feel like my centers could use a little bit darkening. So in order to do that, I'm just going to mix, I think, a little Prussian with the Carmine to get like a level of this color. So like a shade of the Carmine, right, by adding. If I were to mix two other colors entirely, what would happen is um, it wouldn't be relating to the Carmine at all. But by mixing the Prussian or the ultramarine, you know, with it, I just end up with a little bit deeper purple. So I can kind of layer just a little darker in here. And we'll see what color um, that dries. Hmm, don't need the centers there. Just a few here. Um, if your centers aren't dry enough, also, by the way, it will just soup up and become just like a big mass of the color. So you just make sure that it's dry enough and that this is becoming a layer. I think I'm going to take a little bit of the ultra finest because I love a little shot of color, like additional color that's unexpected. And I'm going to just kind of Add it into the centers of these because it's kind of like the dark that I'm looking for and I love the fact that it's a little bit of a surprise it's not what you would expect but you know to the naked eye there's a lot of colors going on that we don't really identify with so it's not that the blue might not be present in the center. It might very well be present in the center. It's just that maybe you're not seeing it because you're only reading a certain color. That's really pretty. Yeah, I like want another place where I can put the blue, but I'm going to leave it because <laughs> it's going to dry. All right. so. The only thing I'm seeing here is I really love this, but I feel like it could just, it, it's a little bit light compared to um, what's going on on the other side of it. So we're going to go ahead and take the carmine and we're just going to fix that. And it's just because this is uh, so much darker. So I'm just going to go ahead and brighten it up a little bit by laying in some color there and creating just kind of a nice little loose petal. There we go. And I'm looking for any other areas that maybe are drying um, and due to my paper just being, you know, sketchbook kind of quality paper, not, not expensive arches. I probably, this is just a sketch. I mean, we kind of got carried away here. This isn't an actual piece, but um, it really did give me a good insight into these colors in this set and how they react to each other. And I love the fact that they're clean, but they're not too clean. I mean, they really have a lot of depth and dimension in them. You know, they're not just like bright red and, and bright blue. They, they kind of are very, 
they have just a lot of depth and dimension so I really do like the kit I think it's it's very well thought out love it now this is kind of just bugging me so I'm gonna reactivate this and blend a little bit of it into my background And then I'm going to take a cloth or literally take your extra brush here and kind of thin out some of the heaviness of the paint. And I'm doing this because I really just personally feel that it's competing with my flower. And if that happens, it's just always better to just kind of bring it out and see if there's something else that you can create that's nicer and if not you can always paint it back in but by lighting it, lightening it up and lifting some of the color and this is just sketchbook paper too I'm able to, to maybe draw away some of the distraction from the flower so now I'm just kinda cleaning up this edge removing the color because I'm going to go back in when it's dry and give it a little bit of the red and I just don't want it in the way so so far I've only used like two brushes I've used the flat to remove color when I needed to I've used the Ultimo size 10 pretty much the whole painting and the Escoda Prado size 2 on the entire painting. I mean, it's pretty much painted everything. Adding a little bit more carmine. Um, I had seen something that wasn't quite bright enough, but again, that's just me. This is not one of those paintings that needs to be super bright. So I just gave it a little swipe in there. And once this is dry, there is something else that you can do. Okay, there we go. Very nice. So lovely. Hmm. All of a sudden my husky got up. They're actually so good. They really are. <laughs> okay. Very, very pretty. All right. We don't want to overwork this. Let's give it a rest now. And um, if you really want to get some shock factor, literally you can grab um, some yellow or some really bright color. And you can go back in and just add it. <laughs> and I know that sounds really strange but like literally like where I had started to add a lot of yellow here we can go back in and just kind of give it that little extra sunshine that just kind of takes the eye around and this is something I pretty much do in all of my paintings is I have some kind of shot of color that I just bring in. In a way that just kind of makes sense to me. I don't know that it makes sense to any everyone, but I get a lot of mentions of it for sure. Like I get a lot of you saying it's the shot of the color that you know that you went back in with that I really really love so this is more than a shot I actually brightened up a lot of these little areas here with this lovely yellow
Mm-hmm. Okay, so we don't want that to be too even. There's a couple of spots that I want to remove. So I'm going to take my big Ultimo brush and I'm just going to lighten up some of the areas that I feel maybe might be a little too heavy or too consistent. Look at this area. I don't want it competing with my flower and I don't want to lose my flower. So Okay, I'm going to leave it. I like it. I like the way it looks. Um, there's one little thing. Now, the place that I added here where I added the blue, um, it looks to me, and this is just to me, like a little nitpicky thing, it looks to me so far, and it might just not be dry, that this is a little bit dark for that flower. So uh, to fix it, I'm going to go in the foreground of the petal, and I'm going to roll a very concentrated petal in the foreground of this, not over it, but just in the foreground of one of the flowers. Not all of them, just the one where I feel like it's really, really dark and my um, carmine just isn't cutting it right now, you know? So you can see why. It looks so pretty that way. And this is so that it has, it's, it's not so light around it and then dark in that center, you know? And I'm going to go here too, just right where it's really close to the center because it didn't look right leaving so much white there next to that blue. I love the shot of blue, but I just wasn't really happy with how muted the carmine was turning out in that center area. So I'm going to do this one, this one, and that's just one more layer of carmine. This is where that fluorescent stuff really would be fun to use, but let's not get crazy because it would just fade. <laughs> very, very cool layers. Now um, I want to mention one thing too, the layers. If you put a lot of layers on, like I've done, you have to keep them kind of um, interesting and consistent because if they become messy with a lot of strikes in them or like a lot of little details in them, it can literally look like messy. You know what I mean? Like it can look like the painting has just gotten so lost. Um, there's a careful balance, I feel like, and I think you know what I'm saying. There's a careful balance between something that has a lot happening and something that's just kind of gotten really lost. And that, that's what I would say to most, most likely watch, watch out for the most, you know. Okay, guys. So I think I am done adding just a bit more here. I kind of like that this paper sucks up some of the color and leaves these little like watermarks. It's, uh, it's been like a love hate relationship I've had with this paper since I got it, but I got a bunch of it because it was Fabriano and I had heard really good things about it. So I just went ahead and ordered it and ended up with a lot of pads of it. And I just don't feel like returning it because I just I need something to paint on um, for classes and stuff that isn't just using up all my really really good papers so I figured well you know one test is just really not going to do it sometimes you just have to suffer through and give it as big of a chance as you possibly can <laughs> so here I am I'm still painting on it trying to give it a chance okay Let's sign this and and we are done.
Okay, so overall, oops, did really well using just a few brushes. We have still some layers that need to be to need to dry, but you can see them. Really pretty. Um, I hope you can see them with this lighting. So in this area, this is the blue, and you can see where we definitely need the petals to appear like they are a little bit more in the foreground than the background. And of course, it's not all dry, so we don't know exactly what it's going to be like between now and when it's finished. This is why we don't want to use a hairdryer, because it's going to completely change, right? There's going to be different things that are going to happen to this as it dries out. So we're going to wait and see, and I will post the final on the Facebook group page as well as my Instagram page at Jacqueline Jacks Artist. The Facebook group page is um, watercolor for beginners, but you'll need a link because there's like a gazillion Facebook uh, group pages on watercolor, but I would love to see you join the group. So come on in and maybe consider taking some classes from me in the future if you like things like this. All right, guys, happy painting. I hope you're enjoying yourself. And yeah, the set is amazing. I have so much more to paint with it. So many more things coming up with it. It's going to be fun.